It's a good time. Speaking of good times. Get this party started. <laughs> that was my line. That is my line. All right, Warriors. Today is Wednesday. And uh, we are going to continue our campaign live from the quarantine zone. And uh, I am going to share one of my favorite stories with you. Uh, you probably have heard it if you've been with us for any amount of time. Um, it's a story about Itzhak Perlman. And this is actually a fairly recent story uh, from 1994. Itzhak Perlman is a violinist. and. He has, he was born with um, some um, uh, congenital birth defects that affected his legs. So he has braces and he has crutches and he is uh, uh, a very talented savant style or savant level violinist. And uh, he's, he gives performances in, um, routinely and I think this one was in uh, Ohio. Uh, but. The, uh, uh, the event starts, crowd sits down, Itzhak comes and uh, on crutches with his leg braces on, he slowly and like deliberately hobbles out onto the stage and uh, you know, puts his crutches you know, um, against the stand, sits down, takes off his leg braces, deliver, you know, pulls out the violin, you know, warms it up, it's tuned, it's ready to go, he kind of gets it fired up and nods to the conductor of the uh, uh, orchestra to begin, and then he starts to play. And in this particular uh, to concert, he plays a few lines of music, and then boom, his, one of his string breaks. So he's got a, a four-string violin. Uh, he blows a string. It's like a gunshot going off in the auditorium. And the, uh, you know, there's this, this deafening silence afterwards. Because when you when you break a string on your violin, you have to restring it, retune it. It's a whole process. It takes a good musician a while, you know, a few minutes to do that. And it's how it has to get his braces back on, you know, uh, um, you know, move around. So, you know, there's this sort of a big pause of like, oh no, how, how much longer is this going to take? Is he going to be able to do this? And then it's like, you know, he's thinking, he looks at the, you know, conductor, he looks at the audience, he looks at his violin, he's got three strings, and uh, he, you know, everybody knows you can't really play a lot of music with a three-string violin, and uh, he just decides to go with it, so he, he turns to the conductor, nods to begin again from the beginning, and then, boom, he starts to play with three strings, and he just gets after it, and the, you know, because he's only got three strings, he has to recompose some of the pieces, some of the music. He has to uh, change the tension on the strings to get any kind of sound going out. But he's adjusting the violin as he's playing this, you know, concert piece, and he's 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 rocking. He's sweating. He's you know he's putting his heart and his soul into it. He's doing everything that he can do, and and he's just um, producing this amazing experience for the crowd in front of him. He do, he goes on for you know, 30, 40 minutes and finishes the concert and the crowd just goes while they stand up, they get, he gets a standing ovation. It's just the most amazing thing that anybody has ever seen, let alone the fact that he did it on three strings. And uh, when they, the, the roar dies down, he's still, he's still seated and uh, he just uh, leans into the microphone and uh, very humbly says, sometimes it's the artist's job to find out what music he can produce with what he has left. And I love that. I love that line. Such a powerful line because so often we find ourselves in an imperfect place. Our back, we're on our back foot. We don't have the resources that we need. We don't have the uh, options and the opportunities that we want. Um, but yet, it's your, it's your show. It's your time. It, it's, it's up to you to figure out how to, how to make your piece work and how to play it. So that's what we're going to do today. We're going to make some music with what we have. We're going to do a fun mobility flow. We're going to warm up, do a speed strength workout with some kettlebells. And I'm going to take my coins out of my pocket and uh, put them on the, on the uh, table so I don't put my uh, change everywhere. 
because I'm always looking for opportunities to assist in the mental, physical, and fiscal recovery of my community. All right, so you'll need a mat and a place to stretch. We're gonna be on the ground to begin with. I'm gonna cue the music. So we're gonna start in the shin box position, which is you're sitting on the ground, one knee forward, one foot behind you. So I'm here. And to warm up, we're just gonna rock back and forth. My feet aren't gonna move, my knees will move. So I'm gonna go from side to side, just like this. And I'm stretching my hips in and out. Moving back and forth. And so I'm kind of tight. So if you need to use the floor, you can use the floor. That's okay. If you're a little bit more mobile, maybe you can sit over your hips without too much assistance. That's all right. Going back and forth. Ugh. Now that we've stretched out a little bit, we're going to get back into the shin box position. Belly button facing forward over that lead knee. And then I'm going to kick out my foot, lift it up, and I'm not going to touch the ground. I'm going to reach out all the way back, set it down, out all the way back. So when I come out, I'm going to keep that leg locked, keep that toe dorsiflexed and pulled back to me. So I'm going to do that five times on the left and five times on the right. So you're going to do five on the left, then you're going to switch it over to the right. Belly button is going to point out over that lead knee. And so if you feel a cramp in your hip, that's OK. That's, that's not bad. That's actually part of it. You have to be able to move that, use that tra uh, TFL, that tensor, tensor fascia latte, which is uh, not my favorite kind of latte. I like a breve latte myself. But I use that, this movement to warm up that TFL. It sometimes gets crampy. It could cause us hip pain, knee pain through the IT band. So you're going to do five on the left, five on the right, feeling those snap, crackle, pops as you go through, and trying to stay as upright as you can throughout the whole experience. As soon as you're done with those uh, kick throughs, we're going to get into the four point position. So I'm going to be here, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to spin, I'm going to lift my foot up to the same height as my hip, pause, come right back down. Lift it up, pause, come right back down. So I'm going to do this five times on the right. Three, four, lifting, pause, five. And then I'm going to do big circles. So I'm going to go knee forward all the way out and back. Brenda, and let me see that circle get bigger. Boom, two, three, four, five big circles. And then you're going to switch to the other side. So I'll be here. And I'm going to go, I'm going to lift up, pause that hip in the air, two, three, four, five, six. So once you do five, you're going to rotate big circles front to back. Keep moving. Whew. Wow. Hips are tight today. Good. Keep that knee bent, Steve. Get that knee high in the air. From here, we're going to do a frog stretch, and we're going to do some frog pumps. It'll be great. So I'm going to face the ground, 
my knees are going to be pretty far apart. So I'm splaying out my knees and my feet on my elbows. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to rock back and forth and find that tension point in my hips. You'll find it too. I'm just going to rock in and out of that tension point slowly, not trying to force anything, just allowing the, that groin to open up a little bit. And then once I get here, I'm going to find that tension point again, probably about the fifth rep. And then I'm going to squeeze the earth with my foot, with my, sorry, not my foot, my knees, for five, four, three, two, one, rest. And then I'm going to relax the knees, bring them out. Then I'm going to squeeze again for five, four, three, two, big belly breath. And then I'm going to exhale and relax those, relax those knees. And then I'm going to slowly come out of the frog position by squeezing my legs together as I get back to the four point. So while I'm in the four point, I'm going to do a little cat cow. This is good for breathing and it's good for stretching the neck and the back. So I'm going to do the cat by pushing through my pinkies, tucking my chin to my chest and exhaling. And then I'm going to do the cow by inhaling, looking at the sky. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale, I'm going to do one more. Inhale, tilting that pelvis forward, looking up. All right. So, we're going to do a uh, pigeon stretch. A lot of people like this one. Some people don't like it as much. Maybe if you're like tight like me. But I'm going to get into a plank. So my body's in a straight line. Take my knee place it in between my hands, and then I'm going to drop my hip down towards the floor, uh, the high hip. That back leg, though, is going to stay straight. So I'm really making sure that all my pressure and tension is staying in that hip while I rotate. So I'm locking out the back leg, squeezing my, squeezing my thigh, keeping that hip push towards the ground. I'm going to breathe in through my nose, out through my mouth, in through my nose, out through my mouth. We'll do one more breath, then we'll switch sides. And then I'm going to come up into that plank again, take my knee, drop it to the other side. Back leg stays straight, and I'm going to gently drop this high hip towards the ground, keeping that back leg stiff and strong. Whew. So I already feel this a lot, and I'm just not trying to force anything. I'm trying to breathe and allow the breath to stretch my body for me. Inhale through the nose. Breathe long and slow, deeply out through the mouth. Back leg is locked. Breathe through the nose. Out through the mouth. One more big breath. Out through the mouth. And then I'm going to come out of the pigeon. So I'm going to get some extra padding for my knee real quick. 
because we're going to do some stuff from the uh, half kneeling position. So I'm going to start here, pushing my shoelaces from the back foot into the floor, flattening out my low back. Now I should feel tension on my hip. My lead foot will push down into the floor pretty hard, so I'm pushing down through the floor. Reach it out. All the way up. Rotating at the arm. All the way back. Back down. Coming back down. Letting that shoulder pull away from the ear a lot. And then I'm going to keep my belly tight. Breathing into my belly, I'm going to go backwards. Palm facing the ceiling, elbow straight, pushing that, those fingers away from the ears. I'm going to rotate at the arm. Palm's going to come up and in as my bicep comes up to my ear. Again, pushing down through that lead leg, keeping everything tight, shrugging up to the ceiling as my rib cage comes down. All the way through. Coming back, reaching to the other side. So, here I am. Uh, lead foot pressed into the ground, tilting that pelvis. The reason why we tilt the pelvis first is because we want to lock in that neutral spine so we're not shrugging and leaning and all over the place. Plus, it helps us to get a stretch in the quad. If you're like me and Steve, you got to get as much stretching as you can with everything. So I'm going to rotate forward. I'm going to let my fingers go even further out. It might feel like you've already reached maximum uh, range of motion. Reach a little further. Then come up, all the way up, shrugging up to the sky, rib cage down, rotating at the arm, coming back, back down, down, palm facing in, and then I'm going to come back the way I came. Making this really, really beneficial for that tricep by reaching down, rotating out, palm facing the sky. That lead foot's really pushed into the ground so I can stretch that quad. Here I am getting longer than I even want to get. And then reaching forward. Nice. Coming very slowly all the way back through. Woohoo, woohoo! Fun stuff. So, we're going to uh, do a little downward dog just to stretch out the calves and the hamstrings, get the shoulders warmed up. I'm going to come back over my mat. I'm going to come up into the sky here, butt high. Biceps are going to be by the ears again. And once I get here, I'm going to pump my, my heels to the floor. Like pedaling, trying to, trying to touch the floor with my heels. It's okay if I can't. I personally can't. But I'm still stretching those calves and those hamstrings. So I'm pedaling. Then I'm going to dive into upward dog. Taking a big breath. Looking up at the sky. And then I'm going to exhale. Come back the way I came. Pedaling, pedaling, pedaling. Upward dog again. Big breath, looking up at the sky. Then back into the plank. Woohoo! So good. All right, now that we've done a little uh, upward dog and downward dog, we're going to do some standing exercises. So to, to begin with, we're going to do some uh, 
Oh man, I used to know the yoga word for this. It's all right, we'll get, we'll, we'll get to it. Um, we're going to do, get in that double wide stance. I'm going to take my palms. I'm going to place them inside the heel of my lead foot. My wrist is going to be parallel and right alongside my shin and my ankle. And I'm going to inhale, look up at the sky, come back down, all the way out, all the way back to where I, my other side, I'm going to inhale, look up at the sky, come back through, stand low, inhale, I feel that in my groin, my hamstring, shoulders, lats, all the good stuff. Back, inhale, all the way through, inhale, do one more per side, Whew. snap, crackle, pop, feeling a little bit of everything. All right, now my groin's getting going, my uh, hamstrings are a little bit more warmed up. We're going to do a um, breathing exercise, uh, but we'll do it, actually we'll do it right now because we've got to get going on our uh, workout. So this is uh, something that they, they do in uh, Russian uh, physical training at their PE classes in school. Um, it's called zipping and unzipping. We're going to use our breath to help us get our nervous systems ready for activity. It's breathing month, so I figured why not add in some breathing. We'll start here. We're standing, palms facing forward. And I'm going to exhale. And as I exhale, I'll tuck my chin to my chest and I will relax my arms. And I'm going to, to come over into a hanging position, just like I'm just dangling my arms here. Everything's dangling from my waist as I exhale. And then I'm going to inhale, and I'm going to zip myself up, exhale, zip myself down, just dangling, inhale, exhale, Again, rotating those arms forward, just relaxing. Inhale, palms facing forward. Exhale, Whew. big breath, exhale. Relaxing those arms. Inhale, exhale. And inhale one more time. Ha! Now we've really decompressed our spine, gotten everything ready for action. Today you'll need a kettlebell or a dumbbell, something you can move really quickly, should be pretty light. This is a speed strength workout. So we're going to worry about technique first, then speed. So we're going to do a warm up round. This is just to get you familiar with the exercises. So if you can see them on the vault, good. If you're not on the vault, that's okay. We're gonna do them together right now. We're gonna start with the kettlebell high pull. So the kettlebell high pull is basically a Romanian deadlift plus an upright row plus a calf raise. So it's a, a bunch of things happening at once, but to see it or to do it well, you just have to focus on having a good hinge. I'm gonna grip my kettlebell. My butt is gonna come back and then I'm gonna power my butt forward, come up on my toes, pull the kettlebell into my chest, come back down, up, everything's one fluid movement, two, three, we're gonna do 10 reps of this, four, five, Let's go ahead and give me some fun stuff. Okay, Heather, you're looking really good. I want your eyes to stay forward so that you don't lean too far forward. Same with you, Brenda, remember eye contact, Brenda. Always have to have that eye contact with the person in front of you. You should feel that in the legs, calves, hamstrings, butt, upper back. From there, you're gonna go into a traditional swing. So you've already got your kettlebell or your dumbbell. 
and you're going to do a speed swing, which means I'm going to keep my lats very tight, and I'm going to pull that kettlebell out of the sky to keep that, that tempo going. Right now, don't hurry too much, but let me see your swing. Good. Exhale forcefully on the way up to really allow your butt to get maximum recruitment there. That's right, Brenda. Yep. OK. Then you're going to do the push press. The push press is barely a leg movement at all. I'm just going to push my knees out, and then I'm going to hop through my butt and push that weight overhead. Catch it, push. Catch it, push. Catch it, push. So I'm going to use mostly my legs for the power. My arms have to decelerate that weight on the way down. It's not going to go lower than your collarbone, though, warriors. So remember, you're going to stop it up there. You're, yeah, you're just bending the knees. You got it. There we go. Nice work. So you've got your push press. We've got bent rows. You're going to come right into the hinge, pull into your chest, and you're going to squeeze your shoulder blades on the way up. And the elbows are going to come towards the hip pocket. So they're going to come inside, right along the rib cage, towards the hip bone. So you're going to do 10 reps of that. Nice. You're going to be leaning over a little bit more there, Heather. Good angles. Nice. Brenda's getting good at these. I love it. OK. So we'll do that. Then we're going to do a dumbbell curl. Or sorry, a, uh, a curl. Could be dumbbell or kettlebell. So you're going to place your elbows on your body, and you're going to give you 10 good reps real quick. OK, so that's a pattern warm up. So how we're going to do this is every round is just going to get a little bit faster than we were before. So you're going to do all of those exercises all in a row as quickly as you can. I'm going to go a little bit faster in this set than I did in the last one. Um, you can go as fast as me, you can go faster. But the idea is that we accumulate speed as we go through this, as we go through this workout. So we want to gain speed from our training. We don't want to train ourselves to be slow. <laughs> Heather getting those practice reps in. All right, so we're going to go high pull, swing, push press, bent row, and then the curl. Those are going to happen all sequentially. Then we'll take our rest. All right. I'm starting in three, two, one, and kettlebell high pull. Popping up onto my toes, coming in. Three, four, five, six, using my butt. Eight, nine, ten. From there, going into the swing. One, two, Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Push press. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Bent row. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Eight, nine, ten, and then the curl. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Beautiful work. Okay. So, you're going to hydrate. We're going to rest about a minute. 
So that's 50 reps. And what we're gonna try and do on this next round is we're gonna go a little bit faster than we did before. So technique always comes before speed. Not that worried about going fast, worried about how well we do the movement. We, well, we worry about how well we're training. So if there's something that I don't understand, for me the high pull's kind of funky, I'm still working on my elbow technique, so I'm, I might not go as fast through that as I'd like to because I'm trying to get better at it. So here we are, beginning our second round. We're gonna get started in three, two, one, and the high pull. Boom, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Swings. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Push press. One, two, three, four, Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Bent row. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Curl. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Nice. Okay. Rest period's beginning. That's uh that was the second round. We're coming up into our third round. And the goal is to get a little bit quicker than we were before. Now, if you were going pretty fast through that one, I don't want you throwing your kettlebell through a wall or falling over, losing your technique here. But you're just gonna try and be a little bit more explosive, a little bit more powerful on each rep, a little bit more intentional, and you're not going to rush things. There's a difference between being fast and rushing. So we're trying to be smooth and, uh, and elegant in our movements, which we have a chance to practice right now because we're starting in three, two, and the high pull. One, two, three, four, five, six, Swing. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Push press. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Bent row. One, two, three, four, five, six, Seven, eight, nine, ten. Curls. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Whew. All right. So, that was round three. In speed strength training, you don't want to train until you're exhausted. You want to train and stop just before you start to slow down. So before we get slow, we're gonna end. We're gonna do this last set where we're still feeling fast and powerful. Then we're gonna go ahead and do some ab training to give us a little a little extra dessert here so we can uh, 
feel like we got some of that venom out today. So we're going to do our fourth set. This will be our most powerful, most explosive. This is going to be our strongest set. It's also our last set. Game on. Starting in three, two, one, and the high pull. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, to the swing. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Push press. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Rows. One, two, three, four, five, six, Seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Woo -hoo. All right, warriors. Very good. Those are our primary movement patterns. We're speeding up. Grease in the groove, get more powerful here. For our next trick, we're gonna do four core exercises, all in a row, 20 seconds on, 10 seconds off. We're gonna do rainbows, up downs, toe touches, and shoulder taps. So, what does that look like? Again, this is the demo for you to practice anything you're not comfortable with. We're not starting the timer yet. Rainbow, I've got my weight. We're gonna to touch my hip, go overhead, touch my hip, go overhead. My legs are locked, so my upper body moves, and that is it. So you're gonna give yourself a few reps hip to hip, drawing that rainbow with your hands. Then, we're gonna do a plank up down. I'm on the ground. Um, feet apart, up, down, up, down. So going from my hands to my elbows, back and forth, just to make sure to, to train the arms and the abs at the same time. From here, we're going to a uh, toe touch, which is sort of a uh, demoralizing event if you're tight like me. I'm gonna be on my back. I'm gonna have my legs locked, toes towards me, and then I'm gonna try and touch my toes each round or each rep. Legs are locked, I'm trying to touch my toes. Yeah, keep those knees locked there, Heather. Good. All right. From the toe touch, we're gonna to go to the plank shoulder tap. And what that, that looks like is I'm here in the high plank, touching, touching the shoulder, but I'm not rocking my hips from side to side. So, yeah, feet are wide, hips are lower, they're at the same height. So you should be touching your shoulders. Nice, I think Heather's trying to swim through a dog or a cat over there. That's good. All right. All right, warriors. So we're going to do 20 seconds on, 10 seconds in between. We're going to do it for four minutes straight. We're going to have a nice burn. I'm going to look at you to make sure your technique is correct, that we look good and feel good. So we're starting standing with the rainbow. You've got your weight. We're going to go from hip Locking out the legs all the way overhead, hip to hip. Standing rainbow. Starting in three, two, boom. All right, we're moving. Okay, legs are locked. Good. Just touch the hip bone. We don't want to go too far outside of our silhouette. We want to stay nice and tall. There you go. Keep going. Three, 
two, one. All right, we're transitioning into the plank up down. So we're here on the ground. And I'm going to go up and down, down and up. So I'm going to go up and down the whole time. We're starting now. We're moving. Hips are wide, feet are wide. You, you want to rock, but you don't want your hips to rock back and forth. So you want to be strong. Three, two. Okay, we're moving on to the toe touch. So this is a really good one. You're on your back. Your legs are locked. Toes are pulled back towards you, and you're trying to touch your toes. All right. Good job, Brenda. Pull those toes towards you. Lock out those knees. Flex those quads. Flex those leg guns. Seven, six, five. Keep going. Three, two, boom. Now, we're coming over in the plank shoulder tap. So, we're going to be up high in the plank. Boom, boom, boom. Again, trying to keep that hip rock from happening. We're rocking and rolling on the, on the taps. So I'm here, I want to keep my pressure in my pinkies, squeezing the earth with the, the down hand, trying not to roll my weight back and forth. Whew. Three, two, one. All right, we're, we're going back to the rainbow. So we're standing, getting our weight, coming back to the rainbow. So I'm touching my hip all the way over, going side to side, making it happen. Yes. Okay, we're in the downhill portion of the workout. Time to finish strong. Five, four, three, two, one. Okay. Now, moving into the plank up downs. So make sure that you're sometimes changing the order so you're not always going. We're pushing through as we're working side to side and back to back, coming through. Nice work, up and down. Drop those hips a little bit more, Heather. There you go. Five, four, three, two, one. Okay, so from there, we're going into the toe touch. So you're on your backs now. When you're on your back, you want to lock out those legs. Let those hamstrings stretch, touching those toes. Woohoo! Feel that stretch. We're moving. You only have 10 seconds left. Almost home, warriors. You can smell those eggs and bacon are cooking. Three, two, one. All right. Now we're rolling into the plank shoulder tap. So I'm here. Gonna be up high, and I'll be tapping my shoulders starting now. So you're moving, trying not to rock from side to side. Boom. Yes. Yes. Really good. Nice work, everybody. And scene. Ha. Okay. So, we are done with our ab circuit, ab finisher. You're gonna go right into the homework. The homework is for the benefit of your neck and your hips. We're trying to stretch everything out. So we're going into our Cossack, or our lunge to Cossack stretch. So I'm stepping out, and I drop into that stretch. I pull my toe towards me, keeping that chest up, dropping down all the way out to the side, dropping that hip low, Boom. I'm going to do 10 reps per side, going deep, opening up those, that, those groin and hips. All right, Heather, let me see you pull that toe up towards your knee and drop that butt closer to the hamstring. So try to sit the hips down. We can keep the chest up. That's right. Brenda's getting serious. She's getting her shoes on. That's exactly right. Love it. Yes. So remember, it's about how deep the, the hip drops, getting that stretch on the trail leg. So I'm trying to really emphasize the mobility aspect here, not necessarily the lunge itself, 
Oh, a little tight. 10 per side. Then you're going to go into the four point hip mobility right off the bat. So I'm going to be here, knees close to the ground, and I'm going to touch the inside of my foot 10 times on each side. Try not to move my hip, but I am moving my knee to the outside, tucking in that, tucking in that shoe. 10 per side, 10 per side. So Brenda, let's get you in front of the camera. Good. And then I want you to go in slow motion on this one. Archer plank, 10 per side, all the way up, all the way down. Hips don't move too much, they stay at the same height. Brenda, we're still working on those lunges, right? Good, so your, your hands are gonna be right here. You're gonna be coming, keeping that chest tall, right? So you're gonna sit the hips down towards the ground as you step out. Good, so the hand, yeah, the hands don't do much. What you're gonna be looking at is you're gonna be looking for your toe behind you. So as I step out, as I step out on this, my chest stays tall, that toe comes back towards me and I can see it. I want to make eye contact with my big toe and then I'm going to come back. I'm going to step out, eye contact, my trail leg, step out. Yes, all the good stuff. Teaching your hip to turn over. If you were a uh, martial artist, this would be prime time, prime, prime work for you. If you're all perfecting that Cossack lunge at home, uh, then you know what a difference it makes in the knees and the hips and the back. And that's just such a, um, such a beneficial drill. So glad we're doing it. But to bring it all the way back, back to where we began, a, our story about Itzhak Perlman and really showing up in, um, in grand fashion and giving us the lesson wrapped in a bow at the end of his performance, which is you, you play the concert you can with what you have. And you, if you stay in the game, if you, if you don't quit, if you don't wait for a new deal, if you don't uh, you know, try, try a do-over and you just show up and you play your instrument, you'd be amazed at the beauty that you can create with what you have. And I know that we're doing that at Training for Warriors. I know that we're, the Warriors are doing that too. Everybody's showing up with what they got and different circumstances and, uh, and trying times. And I'm proud of each and every one of you. And I'm excited that, to see how everyone grows and develops as they continue to bring forth the Warrior Within. Um, I really like the zipping one. That was new, and um, I like the visualization of that. <laughs> yeah, it's it's funny. Um, uh, that that's a breathing drill that um, I gosh I learned so long ago. And there's so many different ones. It's hard to fit them into the workout, you know. So we're trying to work them in a little bit. But I'm going to be putting videos on the private group uh, about um, different breathing drills and stuff, uh, so you can try them at home because some of them help. Like that helps your preparedness for physical activity. You, you don't necessarily want to do that before bed. You want to do a more calming breathing drill before bed. But uh, there's, a, there's a lot of good stuff out there.